Hello and welcome back to my channel. So this is a continuation on the ultrasound uh, listener and uh, last time we talked about uh, in detail the high pass filter and today we will talk about the uh, local oscillator in detail and probably a couple of different circuits to achieve uh, a um, a relatively uh, a good shaped sine wave as input to the mixer modulator and if we have time maybe we'll get into the mixer modulator otherwise we'll save it for the next video so just to uh, sort of uh, give you a, a brief overview the uh, the principle of operation is we are trying to detect the difference frequencies uh, output from the mixer modulator um, which is the frequencies we're, we're trying to listen to in the audio uh, amplifier so what that involves is heterodyning uh, a uh, ultrasonic sound input with a local oscillator where the spectrum of the of the uh, audio is subtracted with the local oscillator frequency to obtain a frequency shift that will be in the audible spectrum. So that's about the uh, the recap in a nutshell and now we will get on with looking at the details of the local oscillator. Ah, so we, here we have a circuit diagram of one of the chip function generators that I was using for my sine wave oscillator. Uh, it is the XR2206 and I have a few of those but unfortunately uh, the chip is obsolete. So I'm only going to describe it in brief and then I'll move on to something that um, I've rigged up that's more readily available. So uh, basically the circuit diagram here is taken right off the manufacturer's data sheet. Uh, it has the um, uh, nice characteristic that uh, frequency is set by a single timing capacitor and this uh, resistor branch coming off of pin 7. So the variable potentiometer adjusts the frequency up and down according to this formula here f is f equals 1 over r uh, times the capacitance so uh, for the values that i have here i can get a frequency adjustment between 15 kilohertz and 30 kilohertz but uh, yeah and uh, unfortunately it's the chip is no longer made now some of you might get get some uh, from eBay which is well and good if you want to use this one uh, there is a um, output amplitude adjustment by this potentiometer here and the output is taken off of pin 2 um, you should also download the PDF of the manufacturer's data sheet to get more detail on this there are a couple of uh, pins 15, 16, and 13 and 14 which are used to adjust the shape of the sine wave and also reduce the total harmonic distortion but I've left these uh, disconnected and I've in my previous videos I've used uh, this this chip or my function generator to uh, create the sine waves I've used either either one Sometimes it was more convenient to use the function generator rather than working off this chip. Uh, but anyways, if uh, anyone so desires to go to eBay and, and um, find, find one or two, um, here it is. But otherwise, um, it is very difficult to find a um, analog circuit sine wave, sine wave generator even the max 038 is um, is also listed as obsolete can't can't be bought at digikey okay so i have an alternative that i came up with
and the alternative is an age-old it's an age-old concept called the Vien bridge oscillator and basically what it is it's a um, uh, it, it, date, it dates back to the time when the vacuum tubes first came out and I think uh, reading literature on the internet I uh, traced it back to 1890 or something like that but but here it is you can use a, a single op amp and uh, I think I would recommend using a sing, single op amp rather than one of a quad series just so you don't have the oscillations feeding in into uh, any of the other other uh, op amps in the quad but essentially it's it consists of two feedback networks a positive feedback network that consists of a resistor and potentiometer I'll get to that later uh, a capacitor that forms a uh, uh, it's a high this is a high pass filter and resistor and capacitor in parallel that uh, forms a um, a low pass filter so the the p positive feedback loop will will oscillate at the uh, frequency at which the uh, two filter networks cross over so if I were to plot their transfer function I would get a transfer function that looks like this for the uh, impedance wise this would be impedance versus frequency so for the uh, low pass filter you get something like that and for the high pass filter network the impedance network you get something like that and the uh, frequency of oscillation will occur at where they cross so how does the, how does this happen well b basically the attenuation to pin pin 3 the positive input of the TL071 is a minimum at at this crossover frequency where the where the two filter quarter frequencies match and I think it's about the attenuation is about a third so if, this, if these are two equal impedances uh, you can just do the math um, uh, that one plus that one divided by the sum total of the two is, is about a third so so what happens then if, if we were to ignore this part of in the upper part of the circuit these two resistors and diodes what we have is is a, a resistor two resistors in the negative feedback loop of the op amp that boosts it boosts the what's appearing at bin three by a factor of three so uh, amplification amplification uh, anything applied to the positive input is the ratio of this resistor to that resistor plus one so 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 the oscillations will get amplified by the by the negative feedback loop return back to the output and and uh, and and build up the idea is that uh, the one-third att attenuation from this network uh, magnified by the three times gain of this these two resistors is supposed to be equal to unity in reality it's uh, it's impossible to attain that so what you need is something um, a little bit higher than unity to get the oscillations going but what will happen is you know ignoring this for the moment what will happen is the output oscillations will hit the will grow 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 and hit the power supply voltage and you'll get a square wave in the end so so that will be almost V plus and I have the have this neutral point set to one half V plus which I'll explain in a moment but the point being is it's uh, almost impossible 
to attain obtain a sinusoidal oscillator. They all these circuits tend to oscillate in square waves. Okay, so this is where this network up here comes in. So this this is basically my own modification to a, a textbook circuit. Um, oh, maybe this exists on the internet as well. You can probably find it. But essentially, uh, these diodes, 1 and 9, 1 fourth is what I'm using, begin to conduct once their threshold voltages are exceeded. So you have uh, two diodes that will start conducting on the positive uh, swing of the of the voltage. So when the output reaches 1.4 volts higher than this this side, these diodes begin to conduct and start bringing current through this 10k ohm resistor. So what what happens is this branch diode and resistor begins to show up in parallel with with this 5.6k ohm resistor and essentially when, one, once you start paralleling resistance with another resistor the net resistance of the branch or the parallel branch drops so the in effect this is a sort of a acts as a uh, dynamic gain control to um, limit the limit the gain down uh, down to a to be, essentially you'll achieve unity gain feedback unity gain around the whole loop at a certain voltage level that is less than the uh, the the power supply rail and this diode and resistor network do, does the same thing except it does it on the negative swing so so this is a this is a uh, against a gain stabilization network and if you find you know circuits of this vm bridge oscillator uh, the original the original concept actually called for a uh, a lamp to be placed in in this branch so what would happen there is as the current in the loop would increase the resistance of the of the lamp would increase and decrease the uh, decrease the resi net resistance across from pin two to this um, well for in my case it's not a ground it's a virtual ground uh, th therefore reducing reducing the gain that way now I, I don't have a filament lamp handy but I do have a lot of one and nine one fours whose resistance actually uh, decreases with current going through them so in in such a case they would be placed in this branch of the feedback loop just as I have them and you can you can even choose choose to cut out a couple of these diodes and just work with one pair uh, the only difference being is that the output voltage will be lower uh, so you get something like three volts with uh, peak to peak uh, with one pair of diodes and you'll get something like six volts peak to peak with two pairs so <clears throat> uh, the since I'm using um, uh, single power supplies I'm using a V plus of 12 12 volts and a ground I uh, a lot a lot of these uh, circuits are uh, if you find the uh, internet references to them or textbooks references they're meant to operate with with a positive 12 or a, a positive v plus and a negative v plus and this point is connected to a ground point so i've chosen to work with single supply and ground and i'm having a circuit that will produce a 50 percent power uh, v plus voltage to to take place of a virtual ground and I do have a circuit that I've built for that and it's down here so it's basically a transistor with a voltage divider connected to its base um, and this will provide a, uh, a stable 50% almost 50% V plus output across here 
that is fed back into this point. So the operation of, of this circuit is, is it's essentially like a, uh, a, a voltage regulator. Uh, this the 4.7k resistors act as a voltage divider and they're pretty much a voltage divider because the amount of current drawn from through the base here compared to the current going through the emitter circuit is um, is very small so another way, another way of looking at it is that the impedance at the emitter uh, appears in parallel with this diode and resistor that is magnified by so we'll call this we'll just call that the net emitter impedance by the 1 plus beta of the transistor times ZL so beta of the of these transistors it can be something like 100 150 so effectively what we have is the voltage drop from base to ground here is uh, unaffected by the load at the emitter because of this uh, uh, impedance transformation relationship that that occurs as as a result of looking into the emitter junction of this transistor so it's, it's basically it's a voltage regulator so furthermore the frequency of oscillation is set by adjusting a dual gang potentiometer so in, th in this case because we're, we, ha we have to adjust two filters, a low pass and a high pass, simultaneously you need two potentiometers that are ganged on one shaft. That's one, one of the drawbacks of this circuit but essentially it's uh, it's built from readily available parts as opposed to the XR2206. So the, for the values that I have here I should get a frequency range somewhere around 10.7 kilohertz to 117 kilohertz and we'll see and compare how this thing does uh, just one further item uh, always use a power supply bypass capacitor especially around an oscillator that's always recommended for any chip so this is the um, a VM bridge oscillator breadboarded. Um, don't th know how much I want to get into the bits and pieces, but it is basically what's shown on the circuit diagram. And this capacitor here, which I probably didn't mention before, it's uh, it's another shunting capacitor, bypass uh, capacitor. Oh, there we go. In the voltage regulator and its role is basically to uh, shunt any noise that might appear here to ground it's an it's a it's a bypass capacitor just like what is used here in the power supply rail so here I'm actually using one set of diodes the other there's four on the circuit board but uh, it's only two that are connected uh, the two two capacitors C1 and C2 are here. They are ceramic, but to get a um, a stable oscillator, I will probably eventually switch to mica. And the dual ganged potentiometer is right here. So it's two potentiometers on a single shaft. That's what's required to make this work. So just before we leave the uh, breadboard here let's actually measure the voltage output voltage that we are supposed to get at the junction of the 10k resistor and the emitter of the uh, transistor. 
see if we actually have half 50% uh, V plus. So if I clip my uh, volt multimeter probe onto there, that is going to the emitter re resistor. And what do we have? Here it is. 5.66. That is pretty close to 6 volts. Satisfying for me. Okay, so <clears throat> what I have on display here on the oscilloscope are um, three function generators. So the first trace, the yellow one, is the output of the XR2206. I didn't go into the breadboard circuits because it is an obsolete chip, but I have used it in used it in the past videos here, so I might as well show you the output. So uh, the second one, the purple trace, is the VM bridge oscillator that was discussed in detail just a little while ago, and the third one, cyan, is the sine wave output of my Siglent SDG 1062X function generator. So th this one by far is probably the, the most perfect sine wave of the bunch and all the other ones have some degree of a little bit of distortion. So even the um, XR2206 output is not quite the sine wave. These these slopes are a little bit too straight, I think. They're not quite they're not like quite curvy enough for sine waves. And the output of the VM bridge oscillator, well that one is uh, quite obviously a little bit distorted. Um although this is the one that will end up uh, be end up using on an actual circuit board. And I don't believe that this distortion is too much of a cause for concern and we'll do a little bit of analysis uh, next to um, actually show that. Okie doke, so next we'll look at the uh, Fast Fourier transform windows of all these three uh, signals and see how they compare. Ah, so what we have here is the uh, Fast Fourier uh, transform spectrum of the output of the XR2206. So fundamental frequency is set at 20 kilohertz right there. The center point is 100 kilohertz so each division is 20 kilohertz and we can see that there is some harmonic distortion. Um, the vertical scale is in decibel volts, dBV, so each 20 dB difference is a tenfold change in amplitude actually. So we'll see that the um, fundamental, from the fundamental of the first harmonic, 40 kHz, is more than 40 dB below the fundamental frequency. The uh, uh, second, harm second harmonic, if this is the first harmonic, second har harmonic, 20, 40, 60, 20, 40, 60 kilohertz is maybe around 30 dB below the amplitude of the fundamental. So if we turn on the table function, we can see uh the 20 kilohertz fundamental at 40 426 milli milli dbv which is almost zero and i'm not sure what that is but it's very low 40 kilohertz first uh, first harmonic 44.3 db below 60.1 kilohertz about 30 db below so the distortion products are 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 fairly low 
and you know the reason why we'd be concerned about distortion products is is the fact that uh, the heterodyning happens with the fundamental and also the harmonics so if we're listening trying to listen in on a bat frequency or a bat that is at 23 kilohertz and we have our oscillator tuned to 20 kilohertz we will be hearing the 3 kilohertz difference but since the first uh, distortion product is 40 kilohertz that would mean that would be a about a 17 kilohertz difference at the first uh, distortion product which is almost out of the range of your human hearing anyways and all these ones up here definitely so are out of the range of the human hearing so that's what the XR2206 uh, output spectrum looks like now let's have a look at the VM bridge oscillator see what that looks like that will be on channel 2 ah here we go okay so in some respects the VM bridge output looks better um, because the, f the first harmonic uh, at the 40 kilohertz point is is almost 50 dB below the fundamental so the, f uh, the harmonic uh, or the distortion product that could be of concern is this one here which occurs at uh, okay 20 40 60 kilohertz okay and that one is maybe 23 25 db below the fundamental and let's have a look by turning on the table so 60 kilohertz yeah there it is 25.8 db below the fundamental so so taking the analogy of uh, the previous analogy let's say that we're trying to listen to a bat that is uh, chirping at 23 kilohertz and we have our oscillator set at 20 kilohertz um, the first distortion product I wouldn't worry about it's very very low the odd, first odd harmonic uh, which incidentally this one tends to produce odd harmonic distortion products will be at 60 kilohertz so six the difference between 60 and, and 23 is 47 uh, very much out of the uh, human hearing range but in addition we will be using a low pass filter set at about 16 kilohertz to filter out anything above that point anyways so this VN bridge uh, oscillator you know as old as it is I think will serve us very well so last but not least let's have a look at the uh, siglent signal generator what that what the spectrum looks like there there it is well it's almost the the perfect sine wave and here's the fundamental at about 0 dBV and just about everything is 60 decibels below the fundamental well yeah you know you can't uh, can't ask for anything better than that but but then again um, I'm not going to carry the signal generator to the field with me there it is it will be the VM bridge oscillator uh, soldered to a printed circuit card so that's about the uh, analysis as as far as it goes on the oscillator